Guys, if you take a look around here on my property, you'll notice a few things. Number one, the flowers are starting to die off. Number two, the pool is closed up. The weather is slowly starting to turn, and all that can only mean one thing, and I am talking beef jerky. All righty, man, look, you know the deal. Hit that subscribe button right there and ring that bell so you get notified every time the channel there's a future upload. So look, if you've never made beef jerky at home and you do purchase it every once in a while at the store, you are definitely throwing your money away as this is one of the most satisfying, uh, to me, one of the most satisfying things I can make on the grill. I mean, look, you get about maybe five, six ounces in a bag at the store of good beef jerky and that's gonna cost you easily over 10, 15 bucks. This whole batch that I am making here today is under 20 bucks. At this time, what I wanna do is turn my attention to the board, show you exactly what we're working with and make us some beef jerky. Guys, I just finished up eating my last batch of this beef jerky, and I could tell you it was some of the best beef jerky I've ever made. Look, follow the link under show notes. Go to my webpage, print it out. Get all the ingredients and make it yourself. So look, I find the uh, the best meat is a London broil. If you can get a London broil, forget the top round, bottom round, whatever else they say. Get the London broil. Try it with the London broil. I've tried it, uh, you know, two or three different meats, and uh, the London broil is the uh, best meat to make beef jerky. Now look, I am going to go with the grain and against the grain, and I did just get this in the mail, and I am super jacked. And we will see more of this uh, of this slicer. I could tell you, man, it is about uh, 50 to 75 pounds. Man, this thing is a uh, horse. Now, look, I didn't have enough time to uh, freeze up my London broil. Hey, man, I am just going to put it on the slicer and do the best I can do. And I can tell you, she did excellent. <laughs> yeah. And again, I will have more on this slicer down in the description. And also, you will see a lot more of this puppy coming up. Oh. So look, whether you slice it with a slicer or by hand, you're looking to go about an eighth to a quarter inch. You want to try to keep them all as close uh, to the same size as possible. And you can go with or against the grain or both. And look, when you, uh, when you add it into the uh, marinade like that, you want to do a little bit at a time. You need coating on every piece of meat. That is very important to the recipe. Oh. So look, you know the deal. Once you get all the meat entered into the uh, into the marinade, she is going to go to sleep in the uh, fridge for 12, 14 hours or so, or at least overnight. All right, guys, look, just like that, man, we are 14 hours later. And as you can hear behind me, I've already got the pit all fired up. Here is the, uh, here is the jerky that we did yesterday. And I'll tell you with those uh, teriyakis, man, the, uh, and also the brown sugar, I get the garlic, man. The smell is definitely in the air, no doubt about it. So look, man, this is looking good here, but there is one important next step that you definitely have to follow, and that here is coming up. Guys, look, so you have a couple choices here. One, it's very important to get the beef jerky dry. And basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna leave it out here on the paper towels. I'll let it air dry for about 15 minutes. I'll keep patting it down like that. Then I'll get some uh, fresh paper towels and put it over it and push that in. So we will let this hang out for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. I'll cover it up another 15, 20 minutes. I've already got my pit warming up. You can hear that. We want to keep this low, man. We want to go with as low as your pit can go. I can probably hold this at that 160 range, and that'll work perfect. Other than that, man, we're looking at maybe anywhere from two to four hours. It's time to load it up on the pit. And look, the only thing I would say here is you can go two ways. You can hang it, and you can uh, just lay it flat down on the uh, 
on the pitch. Just keep them off of each other. You want them to breathe a little bit. Other than that, man, I mean, this is a piece of cake stuff. Let's get over to the pit. Let's load it up, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Guys, at this point, you want your pit as low as you can keep it. I'm going to hover at that 160 range, and that is going to be perfect. You can go uh, flat on the uh, flat on the grate like that or hang it, and also just try to keep them off of each other. Let them breathe a little bit. Let them all get that good smoke. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, look, we are five hours in, and the beef jerky smell is definitely in the air. Let's go in together. I want to show you what to look for to tell if your beef jerky is done. I know this is because I just checked it out, but let me show you. Let's go in together. Let's take a look, and we will close out this show with a little beef jerky taste test. Oh, yeah. Guys, stay tuned here and in a bit I'll show you how to tell when your beef jerky is done. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is this stuff is looking killer. I'm going to get it off, I'll get it on the board, and I'll bring you guys back. Yeah. Alright guys, and that is it. Here you go, man. This is about, uh, I think this is about $20, $22 worth of beef jerky here. This is, uh, I use a London broil here. You could use any kind of lean cut you want and just follow these basic steps on this recipe that I have down below. And you too could be making some awesome teriyaki beef jerky. So look, to, uh, to select your beef jerky, to know it is done, like I said, give it a nice bend like that. You wanna see some of that white in the middle and you definitely want some pull apart like that. And that is the uh, perfect beef jerky. And here you go for a uh, probably my 10th taste test on this, but cheers. So look, man, what could one say other than I love keeping this stuff when the uh, when the weather starts to change. And like I said, I'll make it like probably two times a year towards the end of the year, fall, winter. And I just keep it in the uh, keep it in the fridge in a bag like this. And I'll just hit this as I uh, you know, as I walk by, I'll just grab a piece, give Molly a little treat, you know, whatever. It is good stuff. I'll wrap some up, give, a, give some out to uh, friends and family and so forth. And that is it for this one. Fire up that pit and make yourself some beef jerky. You will definitely dig it for sure. So look, man, at this time, I got to roll my Patreons and YouTube join and members. I haven't rolled those guys right there in a long time. Those guys mean a lot to the show as they definitely help me get things what I need for the show. And I appreciate them, guys. I appreciate you guys for watching. And until next time, we will see you soon.